in Syria, the population reached 50% Muslim in about uh, 1,200 after about 600 years of uh, Islam, the 50% were Muslim. That meant that most of the population of Syria, or anyway half of it, were not Muslim when the Crusaders arrived in Syria. And so then one might well wonder why the Crusaders weren't more successful in establishing their state if the population was more than 50% non-Muslim and that non-Muslim population was almost, in, well, was very largely Christian because the Jewish population, although present, was a small population. And uh, the answer to that is that the Eastern Christians were not in communion with the Western Christians and tremendously resented the heavy-handed attempts of the Franks to establish their uh, uh, ecclesiastical dominance and sided with the Muslims. And so the, the uh, Crusaders got no benefit from the Eastern Christians, except for the Maronites of Lebanon who united with the Catholic Church at that point and helped uh, in the county of Tripoli, but they were only a little group. Okay. And um, in Pakistan, the area that became Pakistan, especially the area of Sindh, which is southern Pakistan around Karachi, the population of the kingdom of Sindh had been largely Buddhist, a Buddhist majority and a Hindu minority. And within 200 years of the conquest, the Buddhist majority had vanished and had all become Muslims. So there was something odd about Buddhists tended to join Islam when Islam arrived. And that has constantly been repeated in history almost everywhere. Um, whereas the Hindus resisted. If the Hindus were about 40% of the population of Sindh at the time of the Muslim conquest, by 1900 or so, they were 25% of the population of Sindh. Today, they are not present there much because there was an exchange of populations when India and Pakistan separated in 1947. But in other words, the, the less than half of the Hindus became Muslims over a period of 1,200 years, whereas the Buddhists just switched to Islam like that. And um, that had nothing to do with uh, Buddhism not being allowed or anything like that, because all of the religions outside of Arabia were allowed. Yes? have seen um, greater conversion to Islam amongst the lower castes in Hindus? Yes, you did, but it wasn't exclusively that because sometimes upper caste people were well placed to become officials and cooperate with the Muslims and in that situation some of them became Muslims too. But on the whole that is undoubtedly true. And remember, the people of Pakistan, uh, pre-modern Pakistan, of ancient Sindh, were Buddhists because that area being on the northwest side of India was identified by the Hindu Brahmins as being an impure area. So they were of very low status in the caste system of India. And that was what persuaded them to be Buddhists. And apparently that hadn't worked because when the Muslims came to Sindh, there was a Hindu king ruling over the Buddhist population. So the Buddhists were, so the Hindu king was defeated in only two battles and the Buddhists opened the gates of all the cities and, and welcomed the Muslims coming or because uh, they had been in a struggle with the Hindus before there. Um, furthermore, when Islam spread down the Ganges Valley, when the Muslim raiders, I should say, who were Central Asian Turks that had recently become Muslims, went down the Ganges Valley and plunged deep into India, uh, the remaining Buddhist population there were the people of Bangladesh. And they were people who, because they lived at the eastern end of India and had been originally a forest people there, um, and were reached by Hinduism later than the rest of India, they were not incorporated into the system. The Hindu system had the three Indo-European castes, which were the Brahmins, the who were the, the priests, the Kshatriyas that were the nobles and warriors, and the Vaishas who were the commoners. And the, that Vaishya Varna uh, or group of castes was later reinterpreted as meaning the uh, middle class, so to speak, this is merchants and um, uh, so on. And then the Shudras, they were the native Dravidian people. So they created a fourth group and uh, that became the, the Shudra group. And they were the, the Dravidian people that were there. 
But once this system became fixed, any other areas that came in after that had no caste, and they became the untouchables. So all the people of eastern Bengal were untouchables, and they found that intolerable and joined Buddhism, which was a kind of protest movement against Brahmanism and Hinduism. And then they, um, when Islam came, they joined Islam. And that is why you have this population of one-tenth of all the Muslims in the world living in this little tiny poor country of Bangladesh at the mouth of the Ganges River, isolated totally from the rest of the world, the Muslim world, by Hindu-dominated India and so on. So you have the, the, this very odd phenomenon that you must have wondered about if you ever saw Muslim population concentrations on a map how it is that the Bangladesh people became Muslim. That's how. They had been Buddhist. And um, so that's sort of an illustration of something about how Islam uh, spread in the world. Um, 